Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katherine, and in this video, we are going to be talking about constructors. So what is a constructor? Essentially, it's a special type of method that can be used in object-oriented programming. So what is object-oriented programming? Um, check out a video I've linked down below. It goes through instance versus class and all of those good terms. And once you have that stuff down, we can get started. Constructors usually have the same name as the class and can be used to set the values of members of an object to either default or user-defined values. Constructors initialize an object of a specific type. Before jumping into the code, let's take a look back at instance versus class. A class is a blueprint. It defines the state and behaviors of something we want to represent in code. It only shows you how to create something. It doesn't create it for you. Let's take a look at an example of a tree with fields and methods. Here we have an example of a tree with fields and methods. We have two fields, in this case we have number of leaves and feet tall, and one method called grow. An instance is a concrete realization of the object we want to represent. The fields of the class have independent values and we can interact with this object in code. An instance is a concrete realization of the object we want to represent. The fields of the class have independent values, and we can interact with this object in code. In other words, we can call the grow method and actually have this tree grow taller. In this case, we have an instance of the tree class, and we're calling it backyard tree. That's our variable name, if you will. It has two fields, number of leaves, which is 50,000, and feet tall, which has the value of 50. We could actually call grow on this by going backyard tree dot grow and it would change the value of feet tall and probably change the value of number of leaves as well. It would dynamically change the object itself. But how do we create these trees? How do we create this backyard tree? It's all through constructors. Let's take a look at some code. Here we have a tree class in Java. It's a blueprint on what trees consist of and what kind of behavior they have. To create and initialize a tree, I'll need to create a constructor. Again, this will be a special type of method that will allow me to instantiate objects and create tree instances. To create this constructor, we're gonna go public tree, and then we're gonna put in some parameters. And they're both gonna be ints, and so we'll put the data type int, and then the name of the first parameter will be init number of leaves. And then the second parameter, also an int, will be init feet tall. And then we'll have our curly braces. And this is a constructor. If you don't know what parameters are or arguments or any of that, be sure to check out my video link down below on parameters versus arguments and what all of that means. Super important to know. Now we need to implement this constructor. We need to put in the body of code that will be run when this constructor is called, when we want to create a new tree object. When we're creating objects, we usually want to initialize them with the appropriate values. In this case, it'll be our input values that are inputted into the function when we call it. And so to initialize this object we're creating, we use the this keyword. So we'll go this number of leaves, which is accessing the number of leaves, the property, the field number of leaves for tree, and we are going to set that to whatever the value of init number of leaves is when the function's called. We'll also need to init feet tall, so we'll go this.feet tall. This will access the instance property, the instance field, the instance variable feet tall, and we'll set it equal to whatever we input into this function. And so if I want to create, you know, a tree with 30,000 leaves that's, I don't know, 10 feet tall, I'll be able to call this method, call this constructor, create that tree, and then its fields will already be initialized with whatever values I put in init number of leaves and init feet tall. This will make sense in a minute. But essentially what we're doing here is we're using the this keyword to access the attributes or fields of this object that we're creating so we can set the value of them and then initialize this new tree instance that we're creating. That's the gist. 
I know that this keyword can be super confusing if you're just learning Java and just kind of getting into this whole coding ecosystem. Um, so I'll make a video about it and link it down below once it's done. If you're wondering what this grow method is, all it is is I increment the feet tall and number of leaves for whatever object we're calling grow on. This again, if you, the this keyword doesn't make sense yet, it will in a minute. Um, but now our tree constructor is in place. It's done, we've implemented it, there's code in the function, we are ready to go. And now that that's finished, we can go ahead and move over to our main class here and actually start creating tree instances. To use the tree constructor, we're simply gonna go new tree and we're gonna give it 5,000 or 50,000 leaves and we're gonna make it 50 feet tall. So a tall tree, 50,000 leaves, that's what we have here. Now again, what is happening with this piece of code? What does this really mean? We know we're making a tree, it's gonna have 50,000 leaves, it's gonna have 50 feet tall, but how does that actually work in the code? Well here, 50,000 and 50 are passed to the tree constructor, and the tree constructor's parameters, init number of leaves and int feet tall, get their values. On lines seven and eight, we set the values of number of leaves and feet tall. We set the value of these fields for this new tree object using the this keyword. Then it automatically returns the newly instantiated tree object. Going back to our main class, we essentially create this object and then throw it away because we're not saving it anywhere. We don't have a variable for it. We don't have a reference to it. To save this tree, we'll need to put it into a variable so that we'll be able to access it throughout our code. And so we'll go backyard tree because that's what we did before on the whiteboard. And then we'll hit enter here so we can see everything. And let's go ahead and print out the values of feet tall and number of leaves. And so to print this out, I'm just gonna go backyard tree. This is the new instance we have created from the tree constructor. And then I can go ahead and access these fields that we initialize, these instance fields. Again, if instance doesn't make sense, go back, watch the object-oriented um, video. That will help a ton. Link down below. Um, but yes, this is instance variables that we have here. Feet tall, number of leaves. We want to access them. We want to see their values. We just set their values up here in the constructor before. And so for number of leaves, we should get 50,000 back in the console. And then for this one, we'll do feet tall and this should return 50. We'll also call the grow method so we can see our tree grow. And so the value of number of leaves will increase. The value of feet tall will increase. And if we want to know how it's implemented, what actually happens when we want to grow the tree, we can go back to our tree class and see, oh, we increment whatever the value of feet tall is by five, and then we increment the number of leaves, whatever value that field has by 10,000. And so ultimately, if we grow five feet, we'll be 55 feet. We add 10,000 leaves, we'll be 60,000 leaves after grow is called. To prove this out, we'll copy seven and eight here, paste it down there so we can see what how this impacted the values of our fields. And then we'll go ahead and run this code. Just I did a um, control click here on the main class because that's where our main method is. Everything is run through the main method in Java and we get exactly what we expect in the console here. We get 50,000 leaves and 50 feet tall first because that's what we initialized with our constructor. That's what we initialized this backyard tree to have. We said we wanted 50,000 number of leaves, 50 feet tall. We constructed it using the constructor and then it was initialized appropriately. And then we called the grow method. This changed the value of our fields, changed number of leaves, changed feet tall. These are all belonging to that instance and that's why we see those values in the console. So what does this all mean? Now we have a fully functioning living tree instance, which we're calling backyard tree, that's how we're referencing it. And it was created by the tree constructor that lived in the tree class that we saw here. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new and be sure to subscribe if you don't wanna miss out on more technical tutorials. Thank you for watching and happy coding.